In the previous video, we took a look at the racks and MIDI tracks approach and why this is a really easy way to set up your libraries and get full control over all the microphone positions inside a Cubase. We also talked about some of the pros and cons with this approach. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at building templates using a different method, utilizing instrument tracks. So the method we're going to be looking at is the instrument track method and there are two or three potential ways you can go about doing this. The first way I'm going to show you is the simplest way um, where there's hardly any routing involved inside of your DAW and if you're one of these people that love to just control the microphone blends from within the patch instead of you know trying to set up all the outputs and this is going to be the quickest method for you. Uh, now essentially the instrument track method uses one instance of your sampler and one patch loaded into it. So for every instrument track we create, it'll have one sampler on with one patch from the orchestral library that we're working with. So if I expand contact here, uh, we'll be working with Metropolis Art 1 again today. And let's say I want to load the, H, the uh, high strings legato AVA patch. I would load that in like so. And this would be pretty much what we would be doing for all the individual other patches of this library have an instance of contact and a patch loaded in now where this is great for people that want to work quickly and they don't want to um fuss too much about setting up outputs and routing and stuff like that and they just want to crack on the most you will ever need to do is to literally go into the microphone positions and activate them and if you want to control the blends from within the patch without opening up contact if you actually open up your inspector on the left here you'll notice on the quick controls that these things are actually automatically mapped and this will vary from library to library but most of them tend to auto map the controls for the microphone blends in the quick control area and if you don't see them you might be able to select them by clicking on them and from the list of contacts you'll see the available um, things that you can choose depending you know it all depends on the engine of the library whoever whoever's made it, the orchestral library. Now you might find that the text is a little bit mumbo jumbo, but once you saved your template and restarted Cubase, this will actually change. It's just because Cubase and Contact need to restart themselves. So the next time you load up Cubase in your project, this should resolve itself. So now that we have our patch loaded into our instrument track, all we would then do is highlight the text from the patch because this is the quickest way to do it. I mean, you could highlight all the text and then copy and paste it using Control and C and Control and V into the track instrument track here. And this process is essentially the the epitome of the instrument track method. We are literally loading single patches up inside of contact from the library. So again, we'll go to the second patch here, enable our microphones if we wish to use these and have access to them. Then copy the patch name over like so. And you'd go through the entire library and build it in this way. And once you've done that, let's imagine we've got quite a few tracks loaded up here. If you open up your mixer, you'll find that you have a master fader for each track to control the volume of everything in the patch, all the microphones. And then if you wanted to, again, control the blend of the individual microphones, you just come back over to your quick controls here and you can adjust them. And also you could automate these as well if you wanted to. Uh, which is quite easy to do just hit the read uh, sorry you hit the right button and then you can automate it with your mouse or you can create an automation lane down here and tie it into your contact instance and to do that you go to you click on where it says volume go to more and then you go down into the patch name which is here strings high sustain APA or it might be just contact if you haven't named it already and you'll be able to select the different microphone positions and assign them to an automation uh, point so we can you know do all this stuff and it'll start moving the microphone around as you can see as it plays back which is great so moving on let's take a look at how we set up a template where we have full control over all of the instrument outputs and various microphone positions inside of Cubase. Next is the very long-winded and complicated way of working with instrument tracks if you want to have control over all the microphone positions from within Cubase. Now this does take some setting up, um, but I'll try and show you some shortcuts to help you get from A to B a lot quicker. Um, so first of all, what I would suggest you do before you create any instrument tracks is create your group buses and your master group 
um, summed bosses as well. So we're going to be working on Metropolis Arc uh, 1, and we'll do this for the high strings just to give you an idea of how you set this up. So if I open up a patch out of the high strings, first thing I need to note is how many microphone positions there are. So there are four microphone positions and there are 16 patches in the high strings section. So before we actually start creating any instrument tracks, um, what I'm going to do first is set up contact. So I'm going to unload that patch. I'm going to name the first channel output here close, A, B, tree, and surround, like so. And then from within Cubase, we're going to open up the right zone and we're going to enable these other three outputs because the initial output on channel one and two is the close mic and then two, three and four, these are our extra microphone positions. We're going to open up the mixer and then these extra positions, I'm going to name them AB, tree and surround. Now, I like to leave the first channel as the patch name and not name it close just because it avoids a little bit of confusion. So bear that in mind. Before we start loading instrument tracks, we're going to create some subgroups and master groups. Because there are going to be 16 instances with four outputs per instance, that's a total of 64 outputs in the mixer. So things are going to start getting confusing unless we manage them. And the easiest way to do this is just to create some group tracks. So right click go to add group track and then we're going to create four because there are four different microphone positions and essentially what we're going to be doing is as we create our instances of contact with their four outputs for each mic we're going to sum those microphone positions to the individual groups and that way we have control over all the close mics the ambient tree and surround just from four faders for that whole section and then what i'll do with the group tracks is sum these to a master boss so we can control the whole volume of the whole section on one fader. Okay, so it's a little bit of fiddliness, but it makes life much easier when you set things up. So we're going to name this first one close. A, B, tree, surround. And if you want to, you can name them like HS close, HS, A, B, HS, tree, HS surround. If you've got your own naming scheme, then by all means use it because it's going to be making things easier for you. I'm going to give these a color. I'm going to select the top one, hold shift, select the bottom one, and then we're going to give them a yellow color like so. Now while these are selected, I'm going to hold control, right click, and then go to add track, group channel to selected channels. And what we're going to be doing with this is summing all four of these uh, channels to their own master stereo group. And this is going to be called HS, or just high strings. We can just call it high strings, in fact, let's just call it high strings. So essentially now, this will control all four of these buses and the entire volume of the section. Okay, so we use the yellow groups to control the blend of the section. We use this green one or whatever color you want to give it to control the overall volume of the whole section. Okay, so this is going to be the master fader essentially. Now going back to contact up here, what we need to do next is duplicate this 16 times but before we do that we need to set up our outputs for these microphone positions so open up your mixer expand the routing tab and then we need to make sure that we route the patch name or the close mic to the close mic group so now this is routed to this and then we need to make sure we route the ambient to the ambient group tree to the tree group and surround to the surround group and what this will do now is that all these mics have been routed to their respective groups and these have all been routed to this master group. So what we need to do next is duplicate this 16 times because there are 16 patches in that particular section. So there's four, we duplicate those, that gives us eight, and then two eights is 16, so we duplicate those eight and we now have 16 instances of contact. And, and this is where we can start loading in our patches and naming things. So we're going to start off with the top one here. We're going to load in patch one from the high strings, which is the high strings legato. And what I like to do is just take the text, scroll across it like this with the left mouse, copy it and paste it. And that's the quickest way you can do things. And the other thing we need to do is activate the microphone positions here and make sure they're assigned properly from within the mixer. So we need to set the output for AB, for tree and for surround. And we'll leave the close mic on the initial first channel which is the patch name 
and then we just rinse and repeat the process. So what I'll probably do for the video here is speed this part up so you're not bored watching me do this. Obviously this has taken some time to set up, but let's just recap on the signal flow here. So we have one instance of contact on each instrument track. Each instance of contact has one patch from the orchestral library, and there are four outputs for each one of these instrument tracks, okay? So the close mics, ambient, tree, and surround from each of these respective instances have been routed to a subgroup. So we can control all of the close mics, all of the ambient mics, all the tree and surround for this section. And then these microphone groups have then been summed to a master fader so we can control the entire volume of the section. Now what I advise doing next is creating two separate folders, one to put all your microphone groups into and the other folder to put all the master fader groups into so we can keep them separated. First I'm going to use shift select to select all the microphone groups, right click and then add them to a folder and name this mic groups. And I'll make them yellow as well. And for this we'll create a folder and I'll call this master groups. And we'll give this an entirely different colour along with the patch there, let's give it a nice uh, pink. No actually no, let's give, it, let's give it a nice turquoise, we'll do that. And what this will do is make life much easier for when we're about to do the next thing, which is setting up our visibility configurations. So uh, imagine that you've already set up the whole orchestra in the same fashion that we've got here, and you've got all the different sections going to their own, you know, subgroups and master groups. When you open up your mixer, you're going to be greeted with a hell of a lot of tracks, because not only have you got your individual instances of contact, but you've also got the outputs listed as well in the mixer. So this is going to start to look very cluttered and very very confusing to work with. Now what I like to do is take advantage of Cubase's visibility configurations which is a really powerful feature that allows you to set up how things are going to look so when you work you don't have to do a lot of scrolling to try and find things. So for example let's say I want to just view the microphone groups for the strings or maybe all of the microphone groups what I can do here is open up the visibility tab on the left or the left zone should I say Go to the visibility tab, I'm going to click on the top one here, scroll down and click on the bottom to do a shift select to highlight all of the patches and outputs and I'm going to check the tick to completely turn them off in the mixer so I don't see them in the mixer. It's not going to affect the sound, it's just going to hide them from the view of the mixer. And then you'll see here where we created those folder tracks we have a group tracks tree and then in that we have the mic groups folder and the master groups folder and we can literally click on the root of these groups and it will hide them all or we can select individual things we want to show and hide as well. Now going back to what I said let's say we want to view all of our microphone groups I'm going to turn off the master groups here so we can see all the microphone groups and this is where you color code in and track pictures and all that kind of stuff is going to be really handy so you can see where the groups belong to. If you've got the newest version of Cubase it allows you to do like color the mixer tracks as well which is really useful. And what we're going to do is go to the top here where it says configurations. If you can't see this then you need to make sure it's enabled from clicking on the cog at the top right and making sure uh, configurations is checked if I remember. Yeah, channel visibility configuration that's the name of it there. Just make sure that's checked and this will pop up. So if we click on the configuration add configuration. I'm going to call this mic groups all. Okay. Now let's say we want to create a visibility configuration to view all of our master groups and I'll turn these off in the mixer, enable the master group. So imagine, you know, the high strings, we've got the low strings, brass, low, high, etc, etc for each section. And I can create another group here uh, called um, master group groups. So now from the visibility configuration tab, um, I can work on specific things that I've set up. So if I want to go back to my mic groups view, I can view all the mic groups and I can change the blends for things. And if I want to go back to my master groups, I can view all the master groups. And you can do this with anything. You can, you can set up loads of different configurations. It's all down to your own preference on how you want to work. I mean, if I just wanted to see all the 
the close mics from the initial patch and uh, for the strings and I wanted to work on the EQ just for the close mics or uh, or each patch needed you know its own individual EQ setting and XYZ then we can enable these to view turn off my group tracks and we could create uh, HS close mics like so and we can just tab to them so if we don't want to apply EQ on the the group we can go to the individual patches, drill into them, add our own plugins on the individual close mics, and then tailor them to how we want. And then when we get to the groups, you know, if you wanted to ap apply a little bit more general EQ across all the close mics, or you've got that control there, so it's really flexible. In a nutshell, this is pretty much the way you go about setting up an instrument track template in this way, where you want to have full control in Cubase over all the different microphone positions and have the ability to use your own plugins on each individual channel. It's a little bit more complicated to set up. It does take a little bit more time, but it does offer you that flexibility. And also something great about this, which you can't do with the Racks and Instrument Tracks method, is you can disable all of your patches. So let's say I'm starting up a completely new project and I want to use Arc 1. I can load it up. This A, the template will load instantly because the tracks are disabled and nothing's getting loaded into RAM. And B, I can just go, okay, uh, I'm only going to be using the Legato Sustains or this patch and that patch in this composition. And I can right click, enable them. Those get loaded up into RAM. Uh, contact gets loaded up. And all the settings that I had previously configured and applied, any EQ or anything like that, will all remain on there as well which is really handy and then you can just use a key command to hide any tracks that you're not using and just work on the stuff you want to work on from the library so it's a really cool way of working with your templates because it offers you the best of both worlds in that sense it's just a shame that it kind of uses a little bit more cpu and that it does take a little bit longer to set up Hopefully you found this video useful and we will be looking at some other additional things when it comes to template building in future videos. Obviously, if you have your own approach to building a template, discuss it down below. It's really cool to learn different approaches from everybody and how they tackle their templates. Everybody has their own preference and there's probably a few little tricks we can all learn off each other. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.